Hey guys, welcome to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a custom button and a custom script for your CNC pendant to get this thing out of your way. This is super convenient on a large machine like this that I can load a full sheet of plywood in because now it's out of the way and I can load the plywood and I don't have to worry about moving or hitting the router bit and breaking it or having to just work around the gantry. Uh, it's something that I've been wanting to do and I haven't done it for the longest time so I was constantly running this pendant uh, and that just doesn't work good. So this is a great script. It uses two buttons on my pendant. This is just a cheap Chinese pendant. Uh, if you search the internet, you can find a plug-in for Mach 4 for it. So the first button sends it out of the way, parks the machine, and the second button, the second part of the script, brings it back to where it was. Uh, so I'll demonstrate that for you. So what's great about this is if you're doing multiple parts or a repetitive part, you can set up the part, you can zero out your machine, your work coordinates, you can run the part, and you could run the script at the end of your G-code to go park your machine and then re replace the part, or you can use the button, um, the script on the button to go move the machine and then bring it back. Uh, so I set it up so that I can control it, I can either park it and bring it back from the pendant, and I can also do it at the computer screen. Um, so let's head over to the computer and I'll show you how I wrote the code. Here's the Mach 4 screen. Um, this is probably what your, your screen looks like except for a few different changes that I've made. I've added a vacuum button and I've added my face because I think it's cool. Um, so what you want to do to get your load sheet script functioning is we're going to create a couple of functions uh, we're going to create one function and that function is going to live in the screen load script so to what we want to do is edit the screen so you go up to operator here and you go down to edit screen and now if you here's where you could change everything so if you go all the way up into the upper left hand corner you're, you'll see where it says WX4 Yours probably just says WX4 or whatever. It, um, I always recommend as you make changes to your screen, you save them and you use some kind of naming nomenclature so you can understand what it is if you that the screen is can do. So in my case, this is my WX4 screen set. It's my Axis machine, and I have added a vacuum button so this screen set can control my vacuum pump, turn it on, I'll turn it off and all of that. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is save this as a new screen. So save screen as and so we'll vacuum and then we'll add sheet load. Let's see how do I want to do this like this. Sheet load or load sheet that's better. Load sheet. Save. Alright, so now we're in the vacuum load sheet screen set that we have. That way if we screw this up, we can always just go back to the last working one we had. It's never a good idea to change stuff and then save it because now you can't go back. Alright, so we're going to go into the screen load script. So to get to the screen load script, you select in the screen tree manager up here in the upper left hand corner. Uh, select that and then go straight down and select events in the properties tab and you'll see here it's the screen load script and there's these three little buttons here select that and this is your um, editor this is the screen load script right here so if yours is stock it'll look much like this except you won't have my auto zero function in there so 
if you scroll down you're gonna see you have a signal library and we're gonna be editing this if you keep going down you're gonna see different functions so there's the keyboard function the remember position function and return position function we're gonna be using this so let's go ahead and create our new function so I kinda I like these headers that they have in here so I'm just gonna copy the header and return everything down one and paste it and we're gonna change what this says here so this is going to be our load sheet function alright so here it's real simple you can just follow along so we're going to create a new function and now we name it so it is going to be load sheet Get the other one there. all right so that's our load sheet function so the first thing I want to happen is for the, the machine to remember exactly where it's at and conveniently enough right here we have the remember position function so we don't have to do anything we don't have to we don't have to copy and paste anything all we have to do is call that function so we're going to type in remember position and you can it automatically tries to guess what you're typing there so when the load sheet function is called it's going to drop down and do the remember position function and this is a pretty simple function it just gets the current position of each axis uh, or axis and writes it to a register so that it can be called later it can be called up by the machine again later all right and now we're going to have it tell us something so we have some sort of feedback that it's working um, and the machine will move so that should be all the feedback you need but I kinda like my machine to talk to me you know it's like a it's a co-worker it's another it's a member of the shop so we're going to have it uh, say something we're gonna have it set the last error which that's the message box in the bottom of the screen and uh, so we're going to pass it the instance of mock that we're currently using so it knows where it's at and what it's supposed to be doing you know timing uh, and then we're going to tell it what we want it to say so I want it to say um, let's see what do I want it to say uh, I'll get out of the way there I'll get out of the way and now we want it to get out of the way so now what I'm typing in here these are these are different um, it's escaping me right now but these are hard-coded into Mach 4 and you can find these in the API documents um, so this is going to execute a g-code when when it's in this script and it's moving down line by line does everything line by line it'll get to this and this is um, what allows it to run the g-code so you can find all of these functions in the API uh, I would recommend reading through that if you're in serious about making your machine as useful as possible otherwise you can just follow along with me and I'm trying to make my machine as useful for me as possible so I'm sure there's some overlap with you and what you want to do but uh, okay so we want to tell it instance and now we're going to do one axis at a time so first we'll start with Z so we're gonna go G54 because that puts it in the machine coordinates and we're gonna go Z oops sorry G0 which is rapid so we're G0 and G1 G0 is rapid so it's as, it will go as fast as you have it set in the motors tab 
or G1, uh, you can set a feed rate. So G0, rapid, all the way to zero. And we're gonna let it do Z first. So with that, that forward slash N, that's like a new line. So uh, when you've watched your machine cut and you're watching the, you know, in the G code window in your machine where you can read all the different lines of G code, it, the machine does one line at a time. So that forward slash N, that tells it to, it's a new line. So it'll first do the G zero for Z. Then we'll do G zero Y. Uh, and my Y, I have it go all the way to the, the positive limit, which is like 60 inches or something. I don't remember. So you'll have to jog your machine to where you want it to be and then find out what the machine coordinates of, of that location is. So these numbers here aren't going to work for you. You'll have to do it yourself. And now G0X. All right. That's it. Done. We're going to end the function. So now we have a function written. Load sheet. It calls the remember position function. And you ha it'll tell you, I'll get out of the way. And then it'll get out of the way. So we'll save that and we can exit. And now what we want to do is we want to create a button that actually calls that function. So I'm going to do it right here. I got some room in the tool here in the tool information box. So I select that box and I'm going to go here to add a new button. And here's the button so I can drag it down here. And I want this button to be the same size and I want it to be spaced the same. So what you can do is um, if you select the button and hold control and select the button next to it, you can go to format, make same size, both. So now it made it the same size. And so now I want to align it. So they're still selected. I can go to format, align. I'm going to align the tops. And now I want to make sure horizontally it's in the right position. So I'll select it and then hit control and select the remember position button. Go to format, align, and I'll align the left sides. There you saw it. So now it's nice and looks nice. So select that button and go over here to the properties tab and select events and uh, we want it to run when it's clicked but it's a script so the left mouse button and when you let up on the mouse button is when it'll load run the script so uh, this is the left up script is where we want to put our script so click on the three buttons to open up the editor and here we're just going to have one uh, what is this called? Variable, which is instance, which is going to equal and uh, get uh, what about you? I have forgotten, I'm having a brain fart. All right, I can't, I'm having a brain fart. So I gotta get the, in, the instance of mock so I can go into something else that I've already done. Like my tool change get instance. Well, I don't know why that wasn't popping up for me. 
mc.mc get instance mc.mc get oh there it is you gotta capitalize all right so you have to get the instance from mockets kind of coming from the and now we're gonna run our sheet load script and I don't remember if it was sheet load or load sheet always good to keep notes write things down load sheet all right so back to the button load sheet and that's it we're done so what will happen is when you hit that button it's going to call the load sheet function which calls the remember position function it remembers the position it will tell us that it's going to move I'll get out of your way and then it moves save that leave this do you want to save the screen yes we do all right so we'll zero everything out here so you can see it move this is just the um, I'm running in demo here this is just a simulator of Mach 4 so we are just kinda playing pretend but it'll work so hit the button and there the Y goes off Z was already at zero so you can see in the DROs Y goes all the way up to whatever I had it at 60 and then there goes X all the way I should have picked smaller number so this one takes so long all right and then if you hit here return to po return to position this return to position script is calling on the remember position um, registers so it'll go back to where you started from so you can send off the machine to get out of your way you can load the sheet and then you can bring it all the way back to where you were where you started from so you can uh, touch off or do whatever you want to do like that so now we want to just change this button a little bit make it we don't want it to just say button we want it to have a label so disable your machine and go back to edit screen select the button go to properties and you're gonna go to the properties tab here and here's the label so we're gonna just change this to load sheet there we go and save it and there you go load sheet and away it goes and you could stop it and go back and what's cool about this is wherever you were at wherever you were working it will remember that position and so when you hit load sheet it'll take your Z back to zero your Y to whatever it was at and your X will haul off to get out of your way you can feed hold and you can stop it and uh, and then you can return to position and you'll see it'll all go back it goes back right to where you were and you're done all right so now let's say you want to have this function on your pendant um, this will work with any pendant if as long as you have the available buttons on the pendant so on my pendant um, I'm using the the XHC HB04 Chinese pendant it works good enough I didn't want to spend a lot of money on it so if you go to control and go over to input signals here I've already done it uh, but what you would do 
is this is what yours would look like. So you would select the inputs you want. Input, we're going to use two and three. So enable the mapping. Enable, enable. Select which device. Now you could do keyboard uh, and whatever your um, input device is, you're going to have a plugin for it, which you've had to install. So if you're using a, a different pendant, select that plugin, but I'm using the HBO4. And then here is all the available buttons that I have on the HBO4. So I'm going to use macro one button and then input three, same thing. I'm going to use the macro two button. So input one, the macro one button is going to go send the machine out of my way so I can load the sheet or do whatever I want to do. And the macro two button is going to bring it back. So hit apply. All right. Done. And you could test your inputs by going to machine diagnostics and hitting the buttons. And you should see your inputs here, the little LEDs light up. And that's how you can make sure it's working. So now we're going to go back into the edit screen. And we're going to go back into the screen load script. So you select all the way up on the tree manager, go to events, and the, click on the screen load script and the three dots to open up the editor. And here we are. And now we want to get into the signal library. So if you scroll down, you're going to see uh, input zero, input one. They don't, I guess mine stops with input one, but you could just copy and paste this for the different inputs you're going to have. So copy, paste, and this would be input two. And so now what we want to do, it's it's commented out by default because we're not it hasn't been used yet. So uncomment it. Uh, don't need the else. And so now if the input is one, if it's hit, I'll use my, I'm pointing at the screen with my finger. If it's live, if the button was hit then it's going to do this. So we want it to do the load sheet function. And then end. And now, so now when we hit that, it'll move. It'll remember its position and it'll move. And now if uh, input two, so if the second button is hit, We don't need else. We don't want it to do anything else. So if the second button is hit, then return. It pop, I saw it there. That return to position. End. Save. Done. All right, so now you have a button that will load your sheet. You will have, one thing I don't like, I haven't figured out, see how everything is grayed out when it's not enabled? I would like to do that with this, but I haven't taught myself that yet, so we'll figure that out soon. Um, but anyway, now when it's enabled, you can hit load sheet from the computer, return to position from the computer screen, or with your pendants, you can hit whatever input you have set up and it'll do the same thing. So there you have it. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Uh, stay tuned. I've got a few more videos in the pipeline that are coming. Um, and I've got some more Fusion 360 for CNC woodworking on the way as well. So I hope you liked this video. I hope it has made your machine and your experience with Mach 4 a little bit easier, makes your machine a little more convenient and easier to move uh, or to use. And so please give the video a thumbs up if you did like it and found it useful. If you haven't already subscribed, please do subscribe. I would appreciate it. Uh, and until next time, thanks for watching.